Section 10.3 is called Applying Properties to Chords. We're going to look at various properties involving chords and a lot of, a lot of things we're we'll looking at congruence when we get with those chords. So our first theorem is 10.3 and that says in the same circle or in congruent circles, most of the time it will be the same circle, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So if I look at the diagram I have there to the right, I'm saying that if these arcs are congruent, then these chords are congruent. Now, this is not usually the typical notation we use, but just for the sake of this picture, let's think here. If these chords are the same, these arcs are the same. If these arcs are the same, these chords are the same. So, we have that relationship between them, and with that if and only if, we have one, the other is implied. So, we look at the example in applying that. Well, in the first one I have that arc AB is 110 degrees. We need to know what BC is. Well, since the chord from A to B and the chord from B to C are the same, that means the arcs are the same. Same idea we just had right here. So, BC would be 110. Now, from the second one, here we have AC is 150. Now, if AC is 150, we have to find AB. Now, we don't have a chord going here. So I'm not going to use that congruent to something. I'm not going to say that it's 150 over at AB. But I do know that since this is 150, the rest of the circle would have to be 360 minus 150, which would be 210. But these are equal, so I divide it by 2, and I get that each of the remaining arcs are 105. So that means AB is 105. So we can use the fact we have 360 in the circle. Now, our next two, should look at them. I'm going to find a better pen. Our next one says theorem 10.4. If one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, then the first chord is a diameter. So if we look at our diagram, QS is a perpendicular bisector of TR. So QS cuts TR in half and does so at a 90 degree angle. If it does that, that's saying that QS is a diameter, which means it goes through the center. Now, the other theorem is kind of the converse of it, it's a reverse idea. If the diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter bisects the chord and its arc. So now it's saying if EG is a diameter and it's perpendicular to DF, then we know that HD and HF are the same, and we know that GD and GF are also the same. Again, we don't use typically mark chords congruent like or arcs congruent like that, but just for the sake of getting this understanding, we'll do that. So we get that. Now let's go a little bit further. If this is a diameter, it cuts it in half, and these two arcs are the same, that would mean that the arcs FE and DE would also be the same, because this would be 180 for half the circle. Well, I subtract the same amount from the top and bottom, and I get the same arcs on both of them. Really, this is like we can think that this diameter folds the circle in half, and really matching up the chords, matching up the arcs, and we get that congruence. Okay, so let's, let's look at using that. So in our example here, we'll find the measure of the indicated arcs. Well, let's just start with what we know here. So this is a diameter, and it means it bisects that chord, and it bisects these arcs. Now, since those arcs are equal, I'm going to say that 9x equals 80 minus x which gives me 10x equals 80, or x equals 8. So I can now plug that in, and I get that the measure of arc CD, which was 9x, is 72, and the measure of arc DE, which was 80 minus x, is 80 minus 8, or 72. So these are both the same. 
They should be, because we did say they're bisected. So up here we have that 72. That's 72. And then they want CE. Well, that's the total for all of them. So or total for both of them. That would be 144. Now we go a little bit further. If I look at CB, that's going to be 180 minus 72. So that would be 108. As would BE would be 108 down here because that's subtracting 72 from 180. And really we can fill in all the information as needed. So it cuts it in half. Think of it. We can fold that circle up and match them up as we go. Okay, so let's look at a couple, couple more practice problems here using what we've done so far. Now it's not fitting so much to which theorem it is. It's looking at a general form and identifying what we're going to do with it. In the first one, we need to find AB. Well, I have AC is 130. That does not have a chord going with it, so I can't set it congruent to something. What I can find is how far it is from A to C. So this whole distance around is 360 minus 130, which is 230. But I want to equal or find the equal parts that make up 230 because it bisects or, or it's um, two congruent arcs. So 230 divided by 2 gives me 115 for each of those. So that means AB is 115. Second one, okay, I have a diameter. It's perpendicular to a chord. That means it bisects, which means if this is 125, so is this. And then since I have a diameter here also, I know the bottom half is 180, which would make that 55, as well as the top 55. And there's AB, the one we were looking for. And then our last one. Well, this is perpendicular bisector to this chord. That means it's a diameter, BD. Since it's a diameter, we know it cuts the circle in half. So now to find AB, it's 180 minus 135, which is 45 degrees. Okay, our next theorem, theorem 10.6, I think it's our last one here, it says in the same circle or congruent circle, so again, most of the time, same circle, Two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So let's, before we look at this diagram, let's take that idea and just jump back and look at one that's a little cleaner to start with. I'm saying that it is equidistant to the center. So let's say that's the center. If I was going to look at the distance each chord is from the center, I'm going to do the perpendicular, a perpendicular segment from the line to the point that's how we measure distance. I'm not just going to draw some random line. Oh look, that's the distance. It's that direct distance. So I could draw a line here and I would show it's perpendicular. So that distance is the same as this distance. Now, it would be nice if we could just leave off that right angle, but we have to show that's the distance. So it almost clutters it at times, but that's what we're looking at. We're saying that this distance from the center is the same when we have the chords are the same as well as the chords are the same means that distance is the same. So that's really what we're saying here. We're saying that AB and CD, the chords, are congruent if and only if the distance to the center is equal. And that would be this distance right here. So they'll they'll typically look in this form. They'll give you either the chords or that distance the same. You'll have to typically set the other one equal. This is the basic, down on the bottom left, the basic example we're going to see of it. I look and I have that QR and ST are the same. Those are my chords. That means the distance to the center is the same, which is I'm going to solve for. So I get 2x equals 5x minus 9. When I solve that, I get negative 3x equals negative 9 and x equals 3. Well, they want CU, which is 2x. So I plug in the 3, and I get that CU is 6. Well, if I check real fast, CV should also be 6 because they are equidistant. And I look, and then uh, 5 times 3 is 15, minus 9 would be 6. So that's my value for CU because they are equidistant. This last problem here is the same idea, but it's going to go a little bit further. And this is one we need to be familiar with because... First of all, we have their equidistant from the center. 
So CU, CV, they're the same. That's good. That means when you first need to find QR, we know it's the same distance as ST. So this is 32. Then when I need to find QU, QU is actually half of the 32 because this line bisects the quartz. So that would be 16 and this would be 16 if we needed it. If This could go back to where we said, well, this line right here, if I extended it, would actually be a diameter of the circle. And if it's perpendicular to the cord, it, or if it's a diameter, it's perpendicular and it bisects. So it, it does fit. So these would be equal. So that's 16. Last, I need the radius. Now, we don't have a radius here. There's not one drawn. We need to add one. And this one, we need to be careful with how, where we put it, because we can make it very difficult by putting it somewhere random, or if we put it in a certain place, it actually becomes an easy problem. We've seen many times. I'm going to draw this as my radius and just label it R, because in doing that, I have a right triangle. I have QR, QU, and CU. Now, that right triangle has R being the hypotenuse. Well, when we're looking for a part of a right triangle, when we know the other two, we use Pythagorean theorem. So I could say R squared equals 12 squared plus 16 squared. That becomes R squared equals 144 plus 256. R squared equals 400. So R is 20. My radius from the center to the edge of the circle is 20. From any from any point on the circle to the center is 20, but we just use that right triangle there. Look for that on this type of problem when they ask you to find the radius. Look for Pythagorean theorem. Okay, to finish up here, let's just kind of review. When we look at these statements, what can we conclude? So, we've had a few different properties today. They all look at particularly chords, but we want to realize what we're really being told here. So, if I look at this first one, AB is perpendicular and it bisects CD. So that first tells me that AB is a diameter. Now, if it's a diameter and it bisects, that also tells me that CB, the arc, is congruent to arc BD. And then I can go further and say, well, arc AC is congruent to AD. So. And that's because it's almost like that circle folds in half, and we can match them up. Okay? Next one. All right. Well, these chords are the same. If the chords are the same, that tells me the arcs are the same. So AB is congruent to DE. And I could even go further that the chords are equidistant the center. We're going to put a little asterisk there because it's likely we wouldn't use that in this problem because they didn't draw the lines. Look at the last one. Last one has those lines drawn. That probably is along the, that idea. Here, we're likely going to be looking at it. If, there's, if a problem had this, they threw in values, it's going to be, are the chords are equal, arcs are equal, you can solve for that. Okay, last one. We have, well, from C to P and C to Q is the same distance. That tells us that the chords are the same. So AB is congruent to DE. And if AB is congruent to DE, the chords, that means the arcs are congruent. And arc AB is congruent to arc DE. So there's our practice. That, that got us the idea here, hopefully, what to look for as you do the problems. From here, I can just add the numbers in, and I know where I'm going to set things equal and where I'm going to solve. So good luck.